And those men are marching out to provide Wembley Stadium with one of its greatest ever games. And really this Football League Cup final is as good as that. We bring you all the action that matters. And after it, our man of the match, Francis Lee of Manchester City. We also have slow motion analysis from Jimmy Hill. But now let's go back to the preliminaries that mark Wembley as always a great footballing occasion. The teams presented this afternoon to Sir Stanley Rouse, president of FIFA. First the turn of Manchester City. Introduced by their skipper, of course, Tony Book. He's having a word with Francis Lee. Ian Bowyer, the substitute. And at the end of the line there, the little mascot of Manchester City who follows them everywhere. And, of course, manager Joe Mercer. West Bromwich Albion have been here for a League Cup final before. In 1967, they played Queen's Park Rangers, then in the third division, and they were beaten. They'll obviously be out to improve on that today with Sir Stanley Rouse leading members of the Football League. Word with the uh, referee today, Mr. Vincent James of York. And now it's the national anthem. two teams can flex their muscles at last and let's catch up on the lineup for today this is Manchester City and uh, because of an error in our caption board George Heslop playing both at number five and at number seven which might be a little bit interesting and as for West Bromwich Albion there's a great chance for their number seven Len Cantello the youngest player on the field only 18 and playing only his 12th first team game but now the kickoff So the 1970 League Cup final is underway. Manchester City defending that goal to our right in red and black stripes. West Bromwich Albion all in white. Manchester City whose flair and fire has deserted them since early December. And they've won only two of the last 11 first division games. And there's a quick free kick given against Manchester City on Jeff Astle against West Bromwich Albion, whose greatest hazard, probably, is their own inconsistency. Here's Astle, who's going to cause them trouble, and hope to float the free kick. It's significant that that ball, although two Albion players were offside, scarcely bounced at all. A really punishing pitch. Here's Corrigan. In fact, it's a final between two, at the moment, very inconsistent sides, and yet two sides capable of great football on the day. And here's Astle now for West Bromwich Albion. And really Manchester City as Albion come forward will watch closely for Astle and Suggett. Between them they've scored 37 goals for Albion this season. Doug Fraser, their skipper. Back to John Kay. A nice little flick there for Fraser again. And now Oaks for Manchester City. They won the cup here, of course, last year, the FA Cup against Leicester. Albion won the FA Cup the year before against Everton. Lee looking for Bell. And a shot by Bell that surprisingly West Bromwich Albion allowed to penetrate so deep. For Albion supporters, a certain amount of disturbing laxity there. Bell masked by Summerby, but Colin Bell given almost a free shot. Astle again getting in before Heslop. Now Tony Book. Lee to Doyle. Looking for Pardo, turning it back nicely for Oaks. Okay, this Albion defence. 
they're a little unsure of themselves. Is that Curla here? Summerby, the man in form for Manchester City. And again, this Albion defence looking a little unsure of themselves. So a corner then to Manchester City. And Booth has gone right up, the big number five. Oh, and Osborne almost losing it. Getting a little kick from uh, Doyle as well. So another throw for Manchester City. Man, Oakes and Doyle. Doyle who can come through so speedily from the back. Here's Astle sending Suggett away and Man chasing after it. Only Suggett is up and Man has done his work. Alan Oakes. Summerby. Lee. Pardo nicely placed inside him and so too is Doyle. Here's Doyle. Summerby. Allowed to go free but couldn't control it. Certainly the Wembley authorities have done a tremendous job on this pitch. Covered by a blizzard in midweek. Covered then by 20 tons of straw yesterday. They got that off this morning as well as a film of snow. And it really is playing as well as you would expect a, a pitch that has taken that sort of punishment. Joe Corrigan, six foot four and over 14 stone of him. Straight to Asa Hartford. And a little flip through there to look for Astle who began to fall and dive a little dramatically. And Corrigan, I think, just a little slow to come out to take that back pass from Book. And so it's a corner for Albion. Talbot is going up. Hope with the corner. Talbot trying to get Astle, in fact, getting ahead to it. And Corrigan a fist. Hope again. And Doyle away for Manchester City. But only as far as Ray Wilson. And here's another high one to look for Astor going in. And it's there by Astor. With only five minutes gone. Jeff Astor, 24th goal of the season. That deadly head of his. No wonder he's delighted. Jimmy Hill. Well, Brian, you were mentioning the skill of Astle, and this is Astle at his very best in the air. Ray Wilson crosses the ball. Now, camera behind the goal shows Astle's glory when he jumps for a ball. Look at the height he gets up there above Corrigan. Corrigan can't withstand the power of that challenge, and there's no doubt the ball's going to end up in the net. And so now there's plenty for Manchester City to do. A tremendous early breakthrough for West Bromwich Albion. Oakes. Lee. Pardo to Lee. Bell to Doyle. They'll want to repair this damage quickly. And here's Oakes to float one. Some of you looking for it at the far post. And again Osborne getting it at the second goal. Tommy Booth to Mike Doyle, Oakes, Man, and there's Hartford, Bobby Hope, losing it to Oakes, and he's not coming back very quickly, Lee, very well watched by Kay, Man. Bell waiting at the far side, and Pardo as well, there's Bell going up and Pardo flicking it on for him. Harris by Hartford. George Hesler. Book. 
And Manchester City throw. Colin Bell back to Doyle. Lee. Getting it across. Some of his there. That show is Tolbert. My goodness, what a good piece of defence by John Tolbert. Torbert really did some magnificent work there. It really looked a formality for Summerby. Doyle. And Summerby. Lee up with him. And Bell. Here's Oakes. On his familiar stamping ground this afternoon. Over here on the left. Pardo. And a fair bit of space. So Oakes gets another go. Now we'll... Osborne get this one. He wasn't going to risk catching it. And his catching has been a little unsure. Mind you, he's taken this knock on the head. That may well just have affected his judgment marginally. But he was taking no chances there. Tommy Booth, the big number five, has gone up again. And it's Glyn Pardo with the corner. Not a very good one. Bell to Pardo. Lee looking to get a hit to it! Beautiful save! By Osborne from Lee! Well, there was nobody in that penalty area shorter than Francis Lee. And yet he got up higher than anybody. Here's the corner from Pardo. And Heslop well up. Fraser. Tony Brown. Hope. That's aimed towards Astle. And he's there, almost tucking it behind Corrigan. Very nearly made that his second goal of the game, Jeff Astle. And every time that ball goes high into the Manchester City penalty area, you somehow feel a quiver in these Manchester City defenders, knowing that Astle is lurking. Now it's Wilson with a free kick. And another high one into that penalty area, and again it's Astle going for it. But this time Arthur Mann to bring it away. Lee keeping it in well. Talbot to Cantillo. Suck it. And Book just stretching out a leg to get it. Tony Book, who needs to drive his men more and more now. A lot of people might feel that they were a bit tired after their trip to Portugal. <laughs> Having played that uh, game in Portugal on Wednesday night in the Cup Winners' Cup and had a difficult journey back, it's not the best preparation for Wembley. And now Saget to Brown. Oh, saved there, but now Brown again. Trying to turn it in once more. And it's Heslop who saved it off his body. First off the body of Corrigan. And then off the body of Heslop. Doyle setting Bell free. In turn setting Summerby away. That must be a free kick. Summerby really plastered to the floor there by John Kay. Tony Book with the kick. Lee going in. Summerby is right there. Boom! This right up. And Pardo as well. Still Pardo. Just pass. How on earth did that one fail to go home? Well, people predicted a lot of goals for this game, and certainly goal situations have been on, but it's still just this one to nil for West Bromwich Albion with just over 10 minutes to go to half time. Pardo and Lee Oaks with a long one beautifully saved by Osborne a 
fine, challenging match this with uh, goal situations always on the cards. Although perhaps Manchester City, by including George Heslop, have uh, fielded a slightly more cautious side. And there's Lee going down, pulled down by Cantelo. City perhaps playing a slightly more cautious looking side. Their attitude is the attitude that we expect from Manchester City, one of clear and attack. And Mr. James having a word with young Len Cantelo for that foul on Lee. Oaks with the kick for Manchester City. Trying to blast one through, but blasting it straight at Cantelo. Man to poke it through again. came off tall but yes this man number five Tommy Booth up again Pardo with the kick Osborne not quite getting a hand to it and just kicked over by Talbot Misunderstanding and a bit of confusion there in that Albion defence. Heslop right up there as well. Some will be the number nine and more pressure on Albion. Pardo with the kick. Booth getting ahead to it. And Osborne grabbing it before any City players could follow it in. Suck it. And now Fraser. Hope. Suck it again. And Hope. Wanting just a little too, tired, too much time to make up his mind. And so it's Oaks for Manchester City. With Pardo free on the right. And that was played a little too ahead of, far ahead of Pardo, but uh, handball as it went across. Oaks to Pardo. And Pardo by determination alone going to Tony Book. And fell then getting it by the same method. Pardo with a shot. Well, those shots are certainly raining in still on that West Bromwich Albion goal. That one from Pardo. very satisfied or very gratified to have the security of that one goal that's already in the other goal scored by Jeff Astle after five minutes Heslop getting above Astle and that was the job he was picked to do and there goes the whistle for half time the long trek to the dressing room begins and the inquest on the first half Albion this goal ahead after five minutes by Jeff Astle with that famous forehead of his But City for all that, Mr. coming back so strongly Mr. and not having the best of luck in the West Bromwich Albion penalty area. So the half-time score here at Wembley in this League Cup final is Manchester City nil, West Bromwich Albion 1. So the Football League Cup final, watched this season by more than 2 million people, really has established itself, goes into the second leg with, second half rather, with West Bromwich Albion kicking off. Sir Ralph Ramsey here to uh, watch the game. Oaks, Lee. Lee again. And Lee yet again, but this time fouled by Fraser for a free kick to Manchester City. Doyle with it, flicked away by Kay, and suck it right back as well. Everybody deep now for West Bromwich Albion. Booth to Doyle, which means that there's precious little room for Manchester City to find any sort of opening at all. Cantello, oh, a good break by Cantello. Brown on his right and Hope on his left. Here's Brown. Cantello, suck it and Astle in the middle. 
and Tommy Boo. Hope. Played wide towards Hartford, and now Suggett. And the whistle didn't go. The whole of that uh, Manchester City defence was standing and waiting for a whistle to go, and it never went. Pardo. Doyle. Doyle going on. Bell, just over! Well, we haven't seen too much of Colin Bell, and he really turned quickly on that one. Oaks. Now Bobby Hope. Oh, and pulled down there, but perhaps Astle overdoing the dramatics and Mr. James was right beside him. That's why he let it go on. And Wilson, the fullback, was always determined that that should be his ball. And although Summerby is writhing in pain still, the referee has seen him and has said, no, the game is going on. So it's hope for West Bromwich Albion. Hesloff. Man then finding Oaks. Lee. Some of you still on the floor. Still Lee. Now Man. Pardo. Bell. Couldn't quite get hold of it, Colin Bell. And finally, there seems to be a little bit of treatment for Mike Summerby. And also a man who's gone sprinting around the track is Ian Bowyer, the Manchester City substitute, who has gone to see what this uh, injury is all about, standing on the touchline right beside this injury. There's Bowyer. man who scored 13 goals, he's a substitute today and he must feel that with Summerby in a bit of trouble that perhaps uh, the time might come for him to uh, go on. But Summerby is prepared to hobble on. Pardo with the corner. Summerby to flick it on in spite of the pain. Well, this looks to me like a rehearsed dead ball movement. Glimpardo takes the kick, drives it hard and low, and Summerby leads to the ball, is first there, and flicks the ball high into the air. But the goal is made from now on by Colin Bell's magnificent jump in the air, wins that ball against all the challenge, and flicks it across the goal and catches everybody out. And then Mike Doyle comes in for a simple task, a nerve-wracking one, but he gets it in just the right place along the floor in the corner of the net. So 1-1 one, one it is, and away go the Albion again. City having threatened for so long in the first half, not so much incidentally in the second half to get that equaliser, and now really it's wide open again. Brown waiting in the middle, and Tommy Booth to get it away. Bell finding Summerby, moving just a little more easily now. No, he's not. Thought for a moment that the goal had cheered him up as well, but Summerby's still in tremendous trouble. Boo. Bell. And Astle and Boo. Oh, and down goes Astle. Boyle charging in on him. And Astle really is offended by it all. Best up to pick him up. The play had gone on. Doyle, the man who scored the equaliser. I would think in a fair bit of trouble with the referee. And he's 
booking somebody. He's booking Astor. The scorer of the first goal of this game. And he's looking, also booking Doyle, the scorer of the second goal of this game. So a mixed day for both the goal scorers in this Football League Cup final. And Tony Book is also being called across. Doyle to flick it on for Lee. Oh, and that was a silly action there by Fraser. It looked very much as though he took a swing at Lee. I'm not sure that he connected. I'm claiming, I think, that uh, Lee was snapping at him a little bit. Some of is off the pitch again, getting a bit of treatment. Fraser finding Brown. Significant that Ian Bowyer is uh, limbering up on the far side, the Manchester City substitute, just going back to the bench. Bobby Hope, and now to Brown, and Astor in the middle, and Heslop's there, oh, almost pushed into his own goal, and now Hartford, and he really missed a good chance then. That really was a golden chance for Razor Hartford. He'll be very annoyed with himself for missing that one. Corrigan was desperately trying to get back across to that post to cover, and there was a good yard and a half at least for him to poke that one away. Bowyer, Ian Bowyer, the substitute. I think that probably means that uh, Summerby is probably coming off. Lee. Oh, and Lee took one in the mouth that time from Fraser. It was the uh, swinging arm of a man who was challenging. And he's having a word with Fraser as he uh, goes along the referee. Tony Book. And now Pardo. Lee. Turned back very skillfully. Pardo to flick it on again. And Bowyer asking to come on. And Summerby asking to go off. Summerby, in fact, already now beginning to trudge his way from Wembley as Ian Bowyer comes on. 19 years old and scorer of 13 goals this season, Bowyer. Mike Summerby. Injured, but even though he was crippled, he flicked that ball on for that uh, equaliser for Manchester City. Lee. And Pardo playing forward more and more. Down he goes by Wilson and a free kick to Manchester City. Who really now are beginning to pressurise this West Bromwich Albion defence. Some of you well wrapped with Joe Mercer's arm around him. The Albion wall facing Francis Lee. You got the impression that he almost tried to dip that round the outside of the wall, but uh, he didn't dip it enough, Francis Lee. But you certainly get the impression that Manchester City, inch by inch, are beginning to get a real grip on this game since they've equalised. Tommy Booth to Oaks. Heslop again there, dominant in the air, really doing a good job at the back now for Manchester City, setting Bell away. Lee outside him, a nice little flick for Francis Lee. Pardo in the middle. And one to the near post for Bell! Good work by Osborne and a beautiful move by Manchester City with one of those devastating near post balls. Osborne really did well to smother that one.
Kessler. Cantello. Mike Summerby just disappearing down the tunnel there towards the uh, dressing rooms, the set end of the afternoon for him. Now Hartford. Doyle. To Bell. And a corner. Bell really is beginning to spark this Manchester City side now. The grip that they're getting on this game has stemmed so much from Colin Bell getting more and more into this game. A player, it seems, with limitless stamina, and that's just what Manchester City and everybody else need on this pitch today. So it's Book now to Pardo. And a little flick on, claims for handball against Kay, but play on, says the referee. So away goes Brown, only suck it up with him. Man versus Tony Brown, and Man gets it. Suck it. And Brown, and now Fraser. Hope. Astle waiting with his head, and so was Booth, and there's Hartford, and a ricochet to Astle! Oh, good luck by Cullinan! Brave and good goalkeeping by Joe Cullinan. Astle completely put through by that deflection. The near misses they've been this afternoon. So it's Lee. Bell. John Talbot and Tommy Booth Oaks Book Bell and then Book finding Doyle did well there finding Doyle again Pardo Bell's throw, finding Lee. Oh, he slipped his man, he slipped Kay there, found Doyle, Pardo. Quietly getting through a very good game for Manchester City is Pardo. And there's Bowyer looking for this one, and Osborne taking it well. He was fouled as he went up. And his catching early on was a little bit uncertain, but there was no doubt about that. He saw that ball and he kept his eyes glued to it and he made sure that that was his all the way. John Osborne. And now is this a chance for Albion to launch a counter-attack? He's got Hope on the right, so Brown finds Hope. And now Suggett, with Astle steaming into the middle. Just over from Suggett. No more than, yes, just over. No more than a couple of inches to spare there from Colin Suggett. And now it's Tony Book. To Tommy Booth. And again, Kay was covering well before Bell could make any impression. Tony Book. To Lee. Oh, jigging past Hope, and past Cantello, with a shot, just past, a brilliant run by Lee. From our camera behind the goal, and it really couldn't have been any closer. Osborne, vastly relieved by that, a tremendous little jigging run by Lee. Bobby Hope. And now 
Scott Heslop. Lee with Pardo bursting through the middle. Played just a little too hard, but the idea was such a good one. Kay. And now Suggett. Chased by man. And he waited quite deliberately until that ball was out of the penalty area before he made his tackle. Cantello. Astor going in and Corrigan grabbing it well. And a mighty throw to Bell, to Pardo, and now Bell. Torbett is there, but Bell getting it again. A little holding. Torbett finding hope. Challenged by Doyle. Still Doyle. A flick to Bell. The linesman's flag is up, though. And now it looks as though the Albion are bringing on their substitute. Dick Kriswicki. And it's Hartford who's going off. Here's a Hartford who's going off. Chris Wicke, a winger, and a fair goal scorer too, and Asa Hartford, the midfield man coming off. Book. And a throw to Manchester City. I remember last year in the cup final, Malcolm Allison describing these last five or ten minutes as the period of fear when nobody wants to make a mistake. And certainly one mistake now would really settle it. Lee and Kay. Astor. Cantello. Oh, and Chris Wickey on the right, screaming for it. Cantello, still Cantello, and Booth almost losing it, turned by Suggett, and City now covering in force, and Doyle so close to putting it past Corrigan into his own goal. But now it's Pardo, who had such a brilliant game at left back for Manchester City in the cup final last year, and now has had a really fine one in midfield and coming forward for them this time. It's Tony Book. Doyle. Can Lee get a foot to it? Can Bell get a foot to it? Played back to Book. Doyle. Still Doyle. A little confrontation there between Doug Fraser and uh, Mick Doyle. It's as well probably that we can't eavesdrop, I think. And John Osborne with the goal kick. Oh, another bad one by Osborne. Straight to Doyle, and Bell is free on the right. There wasn't much he could do about it. And in fact, there goes the whistle for the end of 90 minutes. At the score 1-1. Astle for West Bromwich Albion, and Doyle for Manchester City. And now we face a half an hour of extra time on this most punishing of pitch. And certainly Manchester City, after their exertions in Portugal in midweek, this would have been the last thing they wanted. So it's Manchester City who are going to get us away for the first period of extra time of a quarter of an hour. It's significant too that it was West Bromwich Albion who wanted to get the game going again. They obviously feel that uh, it might be a little bit too punishing for Manchester City after their game in Portugal in midweek. But here are City again through Lee. Still Lee. And still Lee. And indeed it was Talbot who uh, blocked the shot. He's really a master, this Francis Lee, at those jinking little runs through a defence. Albion no doubt remembering that it was in extra time two years ago here in the cup final that they beat Everton with a goal by Jeff Astle. But it's a corner then to City and it's Pardo with it. Low and it's Boya. And it's going to be Pardo again. This time to Oaks. With a good shot and a fair save.
Astle. Played there for Chris Wickey. Still Chris Wickey past the goalkeeper. Just past the post. That was a fine break by young Chris Wickey past Corrigan. Mann and uh, Booth were both desperately trying to get back to that goal line to cover. Heslop again getting above everybody else in that penalty area. Doyle, Cantello finding Fraser. Fraser now to suck it. Oh, and the ball wouldn't bounce for him. Oh, what a desperate piece of bad luck for Suggett who took up such a beautiful position. In the end, he was beaten by the pitch. Doyle finding Lee. Oh, and Lee did well to get it over. Bell flicking it on. Pardo! Well, Brian, that was a marvellous bit of work by Francis Lee, and it's a joy to have the opportunity of looking at it again. He picks up the ball from Mike Doyle. Just let's look as he wiggles there, using his hips, dumbing him all the time. Kay's trying to stay with him, but it's not an easy task. There's a little bobble from the ground. That's making his task more difficult, but he's determined to get by and get that cross over. In the end, he decides he's got to go on the outside, and he's moving down that wing. Now watch the way in which he works to get that ball over. Look at the way he scoops it up to his mate Colin Bell on the near post, who once again wins it in the air and provides the chance for Pardo to come in there, beat the goalkeeper and Fraser to it, and put it in the net. And in case he's necessary, Bowyer's there to pick it out again. Cantalo. Cantalo again. Hope. And again, the head of Heslop. Very happy man, Malcolm Allison there. And forced into an error that gives West Bromwich Albion a corner. And John Osborne very sportingly going out to see what he can do for Francis Lee. Bobby Hope with a corner. And Corrigan away with a fist to Colin Bell. Kay and Bell. And there goes the whistle for the end of the first period of extra time. That sees Manchester City a goal ahead by two to one. The goal in extra time having come from Glyn Pardo, their number 11. There's Pardo. So the score at half time of extra time is Manchester City two, West Bromwich Albion one. 15 minutes now to go. So 15 minutes left for West Bromwich Albion. And the hardened critics around me are saying that it's the best game they've seen for years, and certainly it's had everything. K. And a long and a good ball there to find Fraser. Astor waiting, hopefully, in the middle. That's not going to come through to him. Heslov is covering for Manchester City. Oh, but straight to Fraser again. Chris Wickey. Fraser. And Chris Wickey. And this one should come through to Bell. No, it hasn't. He didn't quite get to it, so it's Tony Brown. And there's a good ball here for Cantello. And a good save by Corrigan. Then Cantello absolutely straight through. Book to Bell. And now to Booth. Forward to Pardo, the man who's put Manchester City ahead. Bell. Good little move building up here, and one for Pardo to fall onto. 
Oakes. They didn't quite come through to Lee because Torbert saw to that. Pardo. And now Lee. Still Lee. A little flick. Heslov again winning that ball in the air, but winning it unfairly. And the Manchester City crowd thought that that was the final whistle, but it's not. And this really must be the last chance for West Bromwich Albion. They've pumped every man forward. There is nobody back now, and there's no cause to have anybody back. Everyone is forward looking for this one. Kay trying to flick it on. But Boya and Bell between them, getting it away for Manchester City. Hook going up on the outside, and it's all over. And the Football League Cup of 1970 goes to Manchester City by two goals to one. The delight on the faces of those Manchester City players. Doyle, of course, who scored the equaliser to give Manchester City new hope. After this man, Jeff Astle, had put Albion ahead so early in the game. And then, of course, it was Glyn Cardo who played as well as anybody on this field. There he is in the middle of the picture, arms round number seven, Heslop, who scored the winner for Manchester City. And that's the prize they've won. And it's a prize that they've worked so hard for on this exhausting pitch, the Football League Cup. Led by skipper Tony Book. The second successive year that Manchester City have been up here. Last year after victory over Leicester City in the FA Cup. And now after victory over West Bromwich Albion in the Football League Cup. Albert Alexander, the chairman of Manchester City, embracing Tony Book. And Tony Burke, in fact, getting the cup from Sir Stanley Rouse, president of FIFA. That's what they waited for at Main Road. What a remarkable career this man has had. Until he reached about the age of 33, he was unknown playing in the Southern League, Tony Burke, and now he's won just about everything. Joe Corrigan, Glyn Pardo, no wonder he looked pleased. The man who scored the winner, Doyle the man, <laughs> thank you, who got the first goal. Alan Oakes, Francis Lee who took so much stick, Tommy Booth, and George Heslop, a real mammoth at the back. Arthur Mann and the substitute Ian Bowyer, Colin Bell. So a really wonderful final, the cup goes to Manchester City. Our man of the match is Francis Lee, with him now, Jimmy Hill. Well, Francis, that was a superb game, and if I may say so, without uh, making you blush, I thought that you were the most dangerous forward on today's form that I've ever seen in my life. What did you think of West Bromwich Albion's performance against you? Well, they had us in trouble early on with the uh, eyeball uh, when Jeff Hassel scored. I thought they played very well, but uh, I think we were just a bit too strong for them at the end. Yeah. Did you, do you fancy them as a side? I mean, do you Oh, yeah, they're a good side, uh, Albion. We've had some great games with them. We always seem to knock plenty of goals in either side. Uh, but uh, today I think we were just at the edge. And well, in fact, they did um, score first and put you in a bit of trouble. Uh, do you see yourself getting out of that? Well, this is a mark of a good side, really, when you can come from behind to win. Uh, I, th I thought we monopolised a lot of the play, but uh, Albion played very well as well. well. Will you tell us about that first goal? Here we see Glimpardo's corner, which is floated over to uh, Mike Summerby, who's hidden behind Colin Bell. Mike's limping badly. The ball goes in the air, Colin rises above John Talbot here and he knocks the ball right across the goal mouth. Everybody's caught flat, flat footed by it and it runs to Mike Doyle and crush it right in the corner of the net. Well that was the equaliser but you've taken a lot out of yourselves in getting that equaliser. Do you see yourselves getting the second one? Well I, uh, I thought the goal was always on, on the card. I, I've never seen us create so many chances in the match without knocking them in. Um, Although Albion had one or two chances, I think we, <laughs> we've had as many as we've ever had in a game and uh, I, I fancied us all, all the way through. Well, you played a terrific part, actually, in, in making the, what was the winning goal. How did you see it coming about? It's, it's Mike, it's Mike Doyle after winning the ball in midfield. He pushed the ball out to me. 
and as we both race for it with uh, John Kay, I'm going to knock it past him, but he, he gets a start on me, so uh, I try to control it. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that he commit himself here, but he he didn't. So the thing is, I've got to try and outrun him here, so I kick it past him and see Cohen at the near post. And I chip the ball for Cohen at the near post. And he rises above John Talbot here. There. He knocks the ball back to Glimpardo, who jumps and falls it in the net, and Ian Boyer falls it in, much to his delight. Well, it was a great go, Francis, and thank you very much for the part that you played in that magnificent match. Good luck in Europe this year, and you know you're going to be in Europe next year. Good luck then. Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you.